investment appraisal, we are looking at long-term decision-making. So you can see just below, investment appraisal is the process of planning expenditure on long-term assets with cash flows that extend beyond one year. When making decisions, whether it's a short-term decision or a long-term decision, we don't only look at the financial impact of the decision, but we also need to consider qualitative factors. So we also need to consider the social, environmental, and governance impact of the decision. We are going to start today's lecture by looking at the three different methods that can be used for investment appraisal. In other words, guys, companies can use these three methods in order to determine whether they should invest in a long-term asset or not. So first, we are going to start with the calculation of the payback period. And this is a very simple calculation. It tells us the number of years that it will take to recover the original investment cost. Let's look at an example just below. Sierra Limited sells appliances and they are considering a 100,000 Rand investment with the following cash flows. So this investment is going to cost them 100,000 Rand. And over the next four years, we can see the cash inflows that they are going to make from this investment. And in addition to that, I've also included the cumulative cash flows. So in year one, they make 25,000 Rand. In year two, they make 38,000 Rand, bringing them to a total of 63,000, etc. So guys, we are trying to calculate the number of years that it will take them to recover their original investment cost of 100,000 Rand. So you can see during year three, they recover the cost of 100,000 Rand because in year three, they reach 108,000 Rand. So how do we calculate the payback period? We know that the original investment cost is 100,000 Rand. We make 25,000 Rand in year one. We make 38,000 Rand in year two. And we make 45,000 Rand in year three. However, that brings me to 108,000. I'm trying to work out how long it will take me to recover 100,000 Rand. So guys, this 37,000 Rand from year three is just the balancing figure in order to bring me to 100,000 Rand. So in year three, the company makes a total of 45,000. However, we only need 37,000 in order to bring us to the total 100,000 Rand in order to recover the original investment cost. So therefore, my payback period is 2.82 years. So what are the advantages of this method? First, it's very easy to calculate and understand. You saw the calculation above, very simple calculation. The other advantage is it gives us a measure of risk exposure. In other words, the lower the payback period, the lower the risk. So obviously, guys, you want your payback period to be as short as possible because that means you are recovering your original investment cost quicker. And the shorter the payback period, the less risky the investment is. The longer the payback period, more things can go wrong during that time frame. So the longer the payback period, the more risky the investment is. What are the disadvantages of this method? Firstly, time value of money and inflation are ignored. You saw when we performed the calculation above, we took these cash flows over here as is. We have not taken time value of money into account. So that is a massive disadvantage of this method. The second disadvantage is the allowable payback term is subjective. So what's going to happen, guys, is companies will set their maximum payback period. So for example, the company above might say that their maximum payback period is three years. And because this investment cost is recovered within that maximum period, their payback period is 2.82 years, they would therefore accept the investment. However, if the payback period is longer than the maximum, so let's say the company set their payback period at three years, but we calculated that it's going to take 
four years to cover their original investment cost, then they would reject this investment. However, determining that allowable or that target payback term is very subjective. How do we know if your payback period should be two years, four years, six years, etc.? And lastly, this method ignores any cash received after the payback period. In our calculation above, we were only interested in the cash flows in order to make sure we recover the original investment cost of 100,000 Rand. Any cash flows that are received after that are completely ignored. We then need to look at the calculation of the discounted payback period. And guys, this overcomes one of the disadvantages of the payback period. We saw on the previous page, one of the disadvantages is time value of money was ignored in our calculation. So now with the discounted payback period, we are going to incorporate time value of money into the calculation. So if you look at the example below, it's still the same information. Sierra Limited sells appliances and they are considering a 100,000 Rand investment with the following cash flows. But I've now told you to assume a discount rate of 8%. So you can see the investment has a cost of 100,000 Rand. These are the cash flows that we expect to receive over the next four years. But we are not going to perform the calculation on those cash flows as is. Instead, we are going to calculate the present value of those cash flows. And guys, the logic is 56,000 Rand in four years' time is not worth 56,000 Rand today. So all of these cash flows that I've been given over here, I need to present value. So one way you can do this calculation is by saying my future value is 25,000 Rand. N is going to be 1 because that is my cash flow in year 1. I is going to be 8% and you compute your present value. Just please note if you use your financial calculator instead of the factors, you are going to have a slight rounding difference. Let's also just look at the calculation for year four to make sure you are happy with this. My future value is going to be 56,000 Rand. N is now obviously going to be four. I is still 8% and you compute your present value. Once again, you will have a slight rounding difference if you use your calculator instead of the factor. Alternatively, if you prefer to use the factors, instead of your financial calculator, the only thing that's going to change is you input your future value at one. So instead of putting the actual cash flow as your future value, you make your future value one. Everything else stays exactly the same. And that is how you calculate these factors. You then just take the cash flow of 25,000 Rand you multiply it by the factor and you get your present value. Take your cash flow, multiply it by your factor and you get your present value. And then guys, remember, you do need a column in order to calculate the cumulative present value so that we can determine how long it takes the company to recover the original investment cost of 100,000 Rand. So we can see the original investment cost of 100,000 Rand is recovered during year four. How do we calculate the payback period? Remember, we are trying to recover the original investment cost of 100,000 Rand. In year one, they have cash flows of 23,150. Take your cash flows for year two, take your cash flows for year three. In year four, don't take the cash flow of 41,160. Remember, this is just my balancing figure in order to bring me to 100,000 Rand. I'm trying to calculate what my cash flow must be in year four in order to recover my original investment cost. Then I can see how far into that year I do recover the cost. So in year four, we have a total cash flow of 41,160. However, I only need 8,554 in order to recover the original investment cost. So that means that my payback period 
is going to be 3.21 years. And then please note, if you compare this to the example on the previous page, our payback period is longer when we take time value of money into account. In the previous example, we had a payback period of 